Let's talk about the evolution of F-U-C-K boys. I'm Paul, apexmindset.net. Hit the uh, subscribe button, the notification bell, so you can get on when I go live. Like the video, share the video, and get on my email list so you can get discounts when the courses come out. All right, let's get into this topic about F-Boys. I won't use the actual term because I don't feel like getting this video demonetized off of YouTube. But I think this is an interesting thing to explore, an interesting topic that we can discuss from an evolutionary perspective. Just kind of brainstorming some hypotheses here for this video, but I think it's going to be valuable to you guys. So an understanding female mating decisions and strategies, okay? Right, we have the alpha guy, okay? So the alpha guy is the guy that she wants to have the babies with, right? That's the most genetically fit person, okay, that she can get, that she feels she can get. But oftentimes, though, <clears throat> the guy that she can get to sleep with her isn't going to be the guy that's going to stick around and take care of the babies. This is called strategic pluralism and evolutionary psychology, or what we might know as the alpha lays, beta pays, or alpha Fs, beta bucks, right? Scenario, right? And we see this play out all the time. So that's the beta, okay? So oftentimes she'll seek mating from this guy and then provisioning from this guy over here. All right, but there's this other phenomenon, which a guy who she sees for short term sex, but he's not really an alpha like I noticed. Like, have you noticed these guys who are these F boys, right? Okay, oh, we'll just write that down there. So these F boys aren't really, they're not really like alphas, you know what I mean? Most of these guys that get the crap kicked out of them, of a true alpha, was in the room. Most of these guys, a lot of these guys are losers, right? But women tend to spread their legs for losers, for short-term mating opportunities or sex opportunities. So it's like, well, what is going on here, right? Why does that happen? And a lot of guys, I think, mistakenly go, well, this guy has, he's, he must be an alpha because she's, she's deciding to bang this guy. But the reality is, though, when you look at it, it doesn't quite make sense, doesn't quite wash. She does have genuine, she has desire for this guy, at least to get her sexual needs met. But it's not like that genuine, crazy burning desire that she has for this guy over here, this alpha. Right. And so when a woman experiences a true alpha, especially an eight, one at an apex level, her genuine desire is through the roof especially if he knows how to push all of her buttons, hit her attraction triggers and imprint her. I mean, her desires through the roof for the alpha guy, but she spent a lot of time racking up notches with the F boys. You get what I mean? And then curbing the betas. All right. So let's look at what happens here, why this dynamic might happen. And so I'm wondering, are there any evolutionary things we can look at or possibly you know, some observations we can look at from anthropology, evolutionary psychology, maybe even looking at primates. And I decided to take a look at bonobos, right? And bonobo structures, because we can observe social uh, environment that chimpanzees have and the social environments that bonobos have and, and, and sort of draw some conclusions as to our own behavior, own mating behavior, all right? And so we've kind of grown more into a bonobo society, which is a female driven society because we've taken violence out of the picture for solving a lot of problems. All right. So apex alpha guy decides to use violence to solve a problem. Society in a coalition of women generally will oftentimes will put that guy away or in jail, right? In a coalition of weaker men will do this though. All right. And so guys can't just use violence anymore to um, be the deciders necessarily of who's mating with who, which leaves the decision-making mainly up to the females. Females are more of the selectors 
uh, whereas males have less power. So what do we notice? And I'm gonna, I'll, I'll put a bunch of studies in the, uh, in, the, in the comments, but again, this is really just a brainstorm, right? But what do we notice about um, bonobo societies? Well, here, what I found interesting is that um, bonobo apes still want the alpha male. Okay, in fact, much more so. So in one group, uh, in fact, of successfully, the most success, successfully reproductive male uh, that they observed had sired 60% of the, the next generation. So one dude actually sired 60%. So what they noticed, which, which was different than the conclusion, conclusions that the more woke kind of feminist minded academics thought that they would observe was that the reproductive skew among bonobos was far greater than with chimps. So chimps can beat each other up and mate protect. Okay. They're willing to use violence, right? More, more often than, than bonobos will. And so because of that aspect of it, chimps are more male dominated in terms of mating decisions. Women have a say and they use their deceptive ways in their own chimp way, right, to um, to get what they want with mating. And um, there's more of a concealing of paternity in chimp societies for fear of infanticide or, you know, all kinds of things. And and so but but chimps, what you notice is because you got to remember, it's not like one alpha does all the mating and then all the betas do zero of the mating. All right. This is not that far skewed. Mating access is skewed towards the most dominant of the chimpanzee tribe. Right. And so but chimps, again, can mate protect or even just use violence and uh, set up that hierarchy and uh, decide, OK, who, who's mating more so from the male perspective. Right. So women had the female chimps have to use a little bit of deception there. Um, and so what you find is that, yes, with with the, with chi with chimpanzees, the females are mating with the most dominant chimpanzee males. And so they thought, OK, well, that must that make that makes sense because the the it's, you know, misogyny, right? The chimp males are the ones deciding who's the mate, who's going to mate. They're going to they're using violence to make that happen. Now, if women were in charge, well, everything would be equal and utopian and everything would be wonderful and guys wouldn't just dis be discarded because women are the caring and uh, the benevolent of the sex. Uh, you know, they're not well, female nature isn't at all uh, um, uncaring and completely narcissistic at all. That's only male nature and male nature's violence and female nature is wonderful. And that's of course the biases they went in when observing bonobos and realizing that, oh, it's a female dominated primate society. You know, wow, this, this must be awesome and utopian. Let's see, let's, let's look at how, how much greater it is, how much better it is than a male German one. And, and as it turns out, it's uh, not such a good uh, prognosis for men. Um, bonobos, when females are left to the selection, they skew more towards a select few men. So, or uh, for select few options for reproduction. All right. So, and I forgot the exact percentage, but again, I'll put the, the, it, but it's, it was a significant percentage. A more select few alpha males are doing most of the mating than with chimps. So when let when females are the deciders and males are have less in, uh, input on the mating decision, women do skew completely upward. All right, demonstrating that 80-20 rule, you know, demonstrating that women want to bang the alphas. All right, but where do these this where do the F boys fit in though with all this, right? We look at female driven mating decisions, which where, where females are the selectors, that's kind of where we're at right now, more or less. And actually, I would argue that alpha males also are major selectors in the marketplace, right? Uh, eggs are expensive, sperm is cheap. However, alpha male sperm is more expensive than than the average female egg, right? So, so males with uh, sexual options, they have more deciders all right but that's a small percentage so then you have the rest and so what you have is females selecting these f boys who are not quite the alphas right in fact they're generally considered disposable losers losers that they'll mate with all right and you see that these girls will sleep with a, a d-bag
And then when a guy's relationship material, it's like, well, oh my gosh, he's relationship material. I'm going to make him wait for sex. I'm going to do this. Is that because the, the D bag she was sleeping with was more alpha? Well, no, it was more because the D bag she was sleeping with, although arguably the D bag had more alpha traits than the beta guy, but the D bag she was sleeping with had zero potential is really what it boiled down to. And so she didn't want to blow her beta provisioning potential by looking promiscuous, which would maybe blow the potential for that beta to want to provision for her, right? And to trust her and to trust her loyalty. So she has to present herself as the good chimp to the beta for provisioning. Whereas the F boy, she can just bang him and discard him. And there's no consequence of that because she can control her birth a little bit, right? With, with birth control. But even before that, just banging that guy, not an estrus or something like that might solve that. But anyway, we, what we look at, uh, the, the, what happens. So if, if we have one female, okay, that's maximally, uh, tumescent or, you know, engorged and ready to mate, the alpha will, she'll go with the most alpha guy that she can mate with for the genetic fitness. All right. So that's what you see with bonobos. So when one female is maximally tumescent or engorged and in, in, in ready to have babies, all right, and, and horny and wanting to mate, uh, she will sleep with the most alpha option she has. All right. And so if the alpha male is there, she's sleeping with that guy and available. However, if there's two fe females that are uh, ready to mate, then that alpha can only really mate in a day about one time. All right. That's his refractory period. He kind of loses that after about a day. Okay. According to uh, what some of these studies. So that means that she, you have two females ready to mate. One's going to pair off with the alpha who can get the alpha, but then the other one will go with the secondary option, the beta. All right. So when both females cannot capitalize on alpha seed, that female still will get her mating opportunity met. It'll just be with the next option that she can mate with. All right. The lesser of the alphas, we could call it. So in we enter the F boy. <laughs> All right. So let's look at that dynamic a bit here. So it's like what happens is these girls, they can't, there's only one, so many alphas for per so many females, right? This alpha guy can bang a ton of girls in a week if he wants to. However, there's still going to be a large number of girls that he just can't get to. Women out there in the sexual marketplace do not, who don't have the option to being with the alpha still want to get their sexual needs met, right? They're not going to want to get their sexual needs met from the beta because they see the beta as a provisioner not as somebody to supply her with sexual needs. They oftentimes too, if a woman is afraid or scared that she's not going to be able to get provisioning from the alpha, that could mean death to her and her children and her becoming attached and obsessive over that alpha. Women are naturally protective over uh, being alpha widowed a little bit, like they may not understand the dynamic, but in a logical level or on a uh, scientific level, but there is a certain ingrained f for a lot of women, women who aren't toxic or having attachment problems, there's a certain ingrained uh, aversion to wanting to become alpha widowed. So if she thinks that a guy is too high in SMV or her anxiety goes up too much for that alpha, she'll blow it. Or she might have have great sexual experience with them, but she's not just willing to cash it in in the sexual marketplace. And she's becoming, you know, she she doesn't feel she can keep that guy, and she feels that it will kind of screw her up later down the line for being able to provision and get beta provisioning. Because if she's obsessed with this guy, how is she going to meet a guy later down the line to take care of babies with, right? And so a lot of that's on an instinctual level. So a lot of women, they'll, they'll have opportunity for alpha seed and they'll either blow it because their self-esteem will get in the way. They don't think that their SMV is high enough 
um, that guy has too many options for, it's intimidating, or she will um, maybe sleep with the guy, but then she'll blow it after that. I mean, remember, if she's like a 21-year-old girl, she's not necessarily, like when she meets that guy that blows her away, she might not necessarily be ready to cash in her chips at the casino in the, in the sexual marketplace, even if this if the guy that's blowing her away is the best guy she's ever had. So she is going to want to have, you know, especially considering that hypergamy is on overdrive in the global sexual marketplace. Like maybe prior to the Instagram, you know, she would have met that apex alpha when she was 21 and been blown away and just like been like, marry me. But now in 2021, that's not what happens because she, even though she meets that apex alpha, her hypergamy is on overdrive. She, she has an Instagram account. She has the sex, the global sexual marketplace. And there's always going to be a question if she should settle down right now, which is her instinctual brain saying, maybe you can mate with somebody better. Right. And she knows it's going to be hard for her to be out there in the sexual marketplace if she is obsessive over and, and 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 has crazy desire over this alpha so a lot of women will blow it with that guy okay they blow it with alphas it's not listen you guys got to understand there's not just binary simple extremes of alpha lays beta pays and that's the answer to everything all right these are convenient theories that you can blanket describe a bunch of situations that might not fit and when you start really observing the sexual marketplace you realize there's a lot more nuances than these binary extremes and i don't think that uh you know we want to reference rational male series and role of tomasi i don't feel like he is necessarily promoting binary extremes either i think that people who interpret his work promote binary extremes all right and so that's something we're trying to avoid here because there's a lot of other nuances right a girl could bang this alpha and want to be with him forever a girl could bang the alpha and he discards her and that leaves her back out in the marketplace all right being alpha widowed and very uh very threatened that she'll never be able to find anybody better right which is a lot now she's got a lot of anxiety and baggage now from that she could be with her apex alpha and she could screw it up because she has attachment problems personality disorders or uh, trouble upbringing, trauma from her past, whatever, that makes her feel not worthy or not able to keep this guy. So she, her anxiety grows up in that relationship and she's the one who blows it, right? And cheats on him or whatever, even though he's the, the alpha, he's the best guy she could have. And she has, she has some psychological issues that are preventing the a healthy pair bonding, right? So these are all possibilities and explain different types of behavior for different women. You can't just blanket statement all women with these, uh, some of these ideas, right? Um, which some people do, which well, we don't want to do. But then let's enter again the F boy scenario. So, what is this? The F boy is a temporary solution to a reproductive problem that she has. Her reproductive problem is to find this alpha that will provision for her. That's her ideal. But because of all the reasons I mentioned, she might not feel like she could have that. So, this means she has to be out in the marketplace and she still wants to mate she doesn't really want to mate with the beta because she wants provisions from the beta and she doesn't see him as genetically fit she sees the f boy as maybe a little bit more genetically fit than the beta he pushes some buttons for her he makes her emotions go up and down because she's annoyed with him right she sees the f boy as somebody she could just bang get her sexual needs met get her get her rocks off and then discard that guy. So the F boy is the temporary solution to the reproductive problem she has, which is she can't bag that alpha or hasn't even met that alpha yet that she could bag. And she's not ready to settle down with the beta. So she needs a temporary solution. That's the F boy. Now back to bonobos. All right. Bonobos mate for a number of different reasons outside of reproduction. That was one thing about bonobos that had been observed. All right. Um, so they mate for conflict resolution, for example. They mate for you know, you know, they mate for all different reasons and social bonding and all kinds of stuff. Women in bonobo females mate with 
lesser males all the time. They, and there's something that what happened, we, we call consortships. We get into these consortships. This is where the, uh, the female chooses to mate with either the F boy version in bonobo society, possibly, or the beta. Because again, the F boy is, is, is more of a beta. He's not an alpha. He's just a little bit more, he's, he's signaling more alpha traits, probably because he's an a-hole and a loser, right? Not that alphas are losers, but being selfish, being, you know, not caring about her needs, being not giving a crap about her well-being really that much means that she can have sex with him without an emotional attachment. She doesn't see him as appropriate for being a beta provider. Um, but also all of those things signal that he is better than she is, right? If a guy is selfish and doesn't care about her needs, that puts him in, in a narcissistic way in a little bit of a position of power. And so she, her hypergamous brain sees the F boy as better than her. The beta that's willing to provision for her, she sees as less than her. She is only going to get horny for the guy that she sees as better than her. Now the F boy is not alpha. All right. He is a you could say a lesser alpha or a superior beta or one or the other. He's kind of in the middle, right? He just, he, he signals because of his douchebaggery, selfish behavior, selfishness indicates mental point of origin of purpose. Selfishness indicates to her that he's better than she is that tickles hypergamy. So she wants to sleep with him, but then the other side, so she gets those, those tinglies for him, right? A little bit. Is she getting the maximum tinglies like for Supreme Alpha guy? If Super Stud came in, she would she would leave that F boy. She was at a bar with F boy and a Super Stud came in like Apex Alpha and hit the right buttons for her. She would leave with that Alpha right there and leave that F boy sitting there by himself. You know what I mean? As long as she thought she'd get away with it and look like a good chimpanzee. All right. And, and remember, women have to look like they're uh, they're good chimps. They have to be socially accepted. But if she could do that and still look socially acceptable, so ex ex if she could do that and still look socially accepted, she 100 percent would do that. Right. So when, women will what, the F boy is a discardable human being to women. He is only being used for a reproductive, a temporary reproductive problem. This is the guy. This is the guy she just bang bangs when she's drunk after the bar. This is the guy she sleeps with uh, when she goes off for a music festival weekend, and that doesn't care if she calls him again. This is the guy that she, you know, has a ten night stand with, right? This is the guy that she just chooses because she's horny and she wants some D, and she's gonna go get this call this guy at two in the morning. But he's he's a total douchebag, and she doesn't want to be seen out in public with him. All right, these are the F boys. People do reproductive strategies because they work, right? So the beta is trying to friend zone their way into vagina, okay? Does work just to a very, very uh, lesser degree than the other strategies, right? It's not a good strategy. But every now and then, that, that friend zoned beta will catch a girl when she's vulnerable and she might, he might get some action, all right? But then, you know, Betas usually end up in what's called consortships when we observe bonobos. So a consortship is when there's a couple weeks of mating between the two uh, primates. Okay, so it's not an alpha. It's really a guy, a lesser status male that she chooses to mate with for a few weeks. That could be because that guy is offering her benefits and provisions and then that stuff just kind of fizzles out, runs out, and then she's more interested in trying to seek out other options. It could be because that beta is mate protecting, all right? So the beta mate protects, there isn't a stronger alpha that wants that female enough to want to challenge it. And so she is and ends up being mate protected by this beta until finally she says, I don't really want this anymore. And then she discards. So a lot of times she'll choose to sleep with a guy thinking he's an F boy, or maybe even thinking he's alpha. And then he shows the beta characteristics too early, right? He shows, well, not just, you know, he just, she shows beta characteristics and she says, and starts creating a consortship. In other words, that guy starts doing mate protecting behavior. That guy tries to push her in the commitment. 
This is why pushing her in a commitment and mate, protect, mate protecting behavior and trying to seek exclusivity early from a female signals to her to, for her to dump you. All right. Because what that tells her is that you're not the alpha with multiple sexual options and you're only really holding on to her, not because of her genuine desire, because she sees you as the best, but you're holding on to her because she doesn't have other options at that moment and you're mate protecting so that she could hopefully not see those other options or get other options. You see what I mean? And so you see this in the animal kingdom. You see the mate protection consort ships where there's two bonobos will pair up for a couple weeks or whatever. And that beta is kind of trying to keep the other beta males away. Now, if another alpha male decided he wanted her, he'd come in and take her and she would glad, gladly go with that alpha. But since that's not happening, so in other words, that, that uh, female bonobo doesn't have sexual opportunity outside of the, and, and that beta is mate protecting, she sort of finds herself in this consortship now. But that will generally fizzle out, right? As she, as she wants to seek out more options. And for bonobo society, that's a week or two, all right? For human society, maybe that's a few months, right? But that's what we see. We'll see a girl, she's horny and in, in, in lack of access to alphas, she'll sleep with a guy hoping he could be an alpha someday or maybe thinking he's the f-boy a good friends with benefits situation for her right um and then what ends up happening is she realizes that this guy's kind of a beta and so she doesn't have other options that are better that she can see and then he may protects her from seeking out those other options but she's not quite ready to try to settle into that beta commitment right so she's just sort of in this thing now with this guy who has and she struggles with his mate pet protecting behavior she struggles with his early um frame announcements of commitment and uh and, and him his early beta frame announcements and she'll struggle with that for a few weeks while she's having sex with them understand women do not know or understand their own instincts nor do most men for that matter so she's behaving off of those and eventually that fizzles out and then she moves on she monkey branches or, or or discards that guy for better options and so that's a consortship we see that all the time with human beings back to the f boy the f boy phenomenon f but we used to call them players you girls say oh are you a player you know back in the 90s now it's f boy all right what that is though what an f boy is is a guy who is not he's more alpha than the beta provisioner he signals sex needs. He's also signaling selfish, idiot behavior. And this is why women go, like guys will say, well, if you're, you know, why do women sleep with the jerks, right? Well, they're sleeping with the F boys. The alpha male, the apex alpha male isn't necessarily a jerk at all. He's just, out, he's a high value male that she can't get. So in absence of that high value male that she doesn't get very often to come around, and when that guy does come around, he's usually saddled with another chick or a few chicks. And, he's, and even if he's single, he might not even be looking at her as an option. So in, in absence, and, and by the way, a lot of this is SMV related, of course, has plays a role, but her own sense of security plays a role too. Insecure women who are hot will often not be able to hook up with those high, high top shelf men also. Right. So in absence of a top shelf men or an apex alpha that signals all of those things um, of being an alpha, she needs to solve a reproductive problem. She ends up going for the loser jerk idiot that will bang her and not call her the next day. That's the F boy. All right. He's signaling. He's pushing her buttons in the sense that he is entitled and acts like he's better than she is. Right. And um, that makes her tingly whereas the beta tries to earn her and tries to care for her and tries to do things for her and, and signals those provisioning qualities which makes her unattracted so she can't sleep with the unattractive guy until she's ready to settle down and then she's going to make compromises so when she just wants sexual needs met she wants a temporary guy that she can easily discard or she wants an apex but a lot of women again aren't ready for that apex alpha or don't think they can have that or have barriers to that. Or they just don't have the opportunity because that apex alpha doesn't want to be with them. Or they just there's a lack or a shortage of apex alpha men nowadays. 
as we as we beta ties men, we end up with more F boys and more weak men that women are not attracted to. And we end up with these F boys that women will bang and give sexual access to to get her reproductive needs met or sexual desire needs met, right? But of course, those aren't good situations for her either. So thank you, woke culture feminism, for, I'm being sarcastic, obviously, but for help, helping to beta ties more men. It's only made women more miserable. There's less, less, less apex alphas to choose from. What you're left with is a lot of F-boys. And so when you find this girl that you like and you're interested in, and she's got a few notches under her belt, chances are a few of those notches are these loser douchebag F boys. And you're probably asking yourself, well, why? Why is she sleeping with losers? Why does she spread her legs for losers, right? Well, and the reason is, once again, it's that lack of opportunity of being with an apex alpha and you know, once again, it's lack of opportunity or ability to get that apex alpha. And so it's a means of getting her reproductive needs met. Understand too, though, that she doesn't know what she's doing, right? She's rationalizing instinctual behavior. So it's not like she spread her legs for these losers and was consciously knowing what she was doing and why. All she knew is that this guy is making me tingle after I've had a few drinks and I guess I'll get laid tonight because I haven't had sex in a while. That's about as far as her, her self-awareness goes. Now, the unfortunate part about this, though, is that what these women don't understand is that demonstrates lower value for them. Girls who are banging F-boys, which is most of you girls out there, all right? You're signaling to high value, top shelf men that you're not worthy of an apex alpha because you're not getting those types of guys and, and you're settling for F boys. That's number one. Number two, it makes that guy question if you're going to pollute your attraction triggers or imprint, imprint your sexual triggers with F boys to a point where you won't be able to appreciate a top shelf man. There's a lot of women out there who cannot appreciate top shelf men. They're incapable of it. They've run through too many F boys. They don't know themselves. They're not emotionally mature enough. And they, they would not be able to handle or appreciate a guy who is at a higher level. It would be like handing the keys, uh, of your Ferrari to somebody who, to a teenager who doesn't care about or take care of cars. You know, somebody who's going to leave it in a grocery store parking lot, bang it with grocery carts, you know, hit curbs with it, fill it with McDonald's wrappers, trash your car, right? Some, some teenager who doesn't appreciate a higher value thing. You wouldn't give your keys to that teenager, right? And say, go ahead, take my car. All right. Same reason why that top shelf man isn't going to give his commitment away to some chick who regularly bangs f boys and so that's a little brainstorm for you guys hopefully you find that valuable i mean just kind of a brainstorm and going through some information from the scientific community from evolutionary psych and uh from you know primatology i think it's very useful in understanding female motivation and you can use this information just to try to help expand your understanding. So when you're dealing with that girl and you're wondering, well, gosh, you know, she's had sex with a series of douchebags. Why is that? Well, now you know. Thanks again for the support. Again, subscribe, share. Till next time.